All right, let's start with your backhand, Bastian. And of course, it's always a pleasure to work on a one-hander. So all the things that I'm seeing, and I'm not seeing many, they're all going to be really small things. But I'm hoping that they're going to make a whole lot of difference. So let's get started with the fundamentals. Your grip is perfect. You're in an Eastern backhand grip here with your right hand, left hand perfectly on the throat of the racket, and you're really initiating a really good, strong unit turn. What that means, of course, is that the right hip and the right shoulder are back. If I were to look from the other side here, I am very sure that I would see your right shoulder blade because you're that far turned. And I love that your chin almost touches your shoulder. As I said, uh, left hand is very active with the unit turn. You have your racket head above the wrist here. So that's exactly what we want. And that way you get a good drop below the ball and the racket head is also below your wrist. And if I go back a little bit more, we see that you have a good drop here coming forward to your contact point. Contact point is right here in front of your center of gravity and between hip and shoulder. And then you have really good extension here, good follow through, and then you're immediately ready for the next ball. So at first glance, not a whole lot, but for a player of your level, there's one or two things that I would want to point out. So when I'm looking at all your backhands here, you have weight transfer coming forward like that. And this is probably one of the better ones that I like here because you have a longer stride on the previous one and on some other ones, you're barely wider than shoulder level here with your feet. And yes, again, you are coming off your back leg and you're stepping forward, but that's about it. They, there is not necessarily the strongest load with a really deep stride in, and that's where what you want because you want a little bit more pop on the ball. And of course, acceleration, which then helps you also if you wanna hit more topspin and keep the ball in play. So what I would suggest, and this is always difficult to see when somebody's just hitting on the ball machine, because we're always, for whatever reason, we're putting ourselves really close to the baseline when we have the ball machine feed balls to us. I would like to see what your back end is doing if you start back a little bit further, and instead of just moving pretty laterally to it, with the exception of this ball that lands a little shorter, so you're really moving up and that's when you have that wider stride. I would be interested to see if you're starting a little bit further back here and you're coming at the ball with a wider stride every single time. The other thing is I think you can let your left hip come around a little bit more actively. And I'm not sure, maybe you were taught, hold your side, stay sideways, long extension. You have all of those. So with the player of your level, if you're starting to load a little heavier and you do see how your left hip is coming back and around, so it's pointing to your back right, basically, towards the back fence here, you can't really out of a turn then into a just linear forward motion. You have that forward motion right here, but now let that left hip come around a little bit more because it looks to me almost like you're forcing yourself to keep your left side back. And that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to force that side on position too much because you're blocking yourself. So that has a little bit of a wider stance. I like that. So let that just swing around. Try not to block that. And we'll see that a little bit more from the back. So because of how you have the setting of the ball machine, you're being pulled out wide. And I think that's actually really, really good because it highlights what I want to show you even more. 
So to my mind, you can fit one more step in here so that your outside leg here is a little bit more behind the ball and that will enable you to step forward a little bit more. You're not going to be able to step in this direction, but on some of these balls, you're literally just stepping laterally, especially when it comes a little wider here. So you're stepping laterally here. There's a little bit of an angle, but you're not really getting behind the ball. And that means that you're just getting an off pace ball. Now, if that here was a deliberate shot, then I do like that you give it height on the ball so that you would in a match have time to recover. But the ideal sequence of footwork would be that you're getting out there a little more aggressively, quick, 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 and then you're stepping forward a little bit more and then with a little bit more spacing between your legs so that you get your entire body lower and you can load heavier off that back leg and therefore transfer your body weight into the ball a little bit more. Now you're not probably at the pace with which you're hitting it at your level. You're not going to be um, able to always step in, meaning that you literally have that outside leg behind and then your front foot drives into it. That's just at your level, not possible all the time, unless you're standing here somewhere and the ball's coming through the middle. Anytime you're going to be pulled out wider, you will have this direction a little bit more. However, I think you can do a little bit more of an aggressive job getting behind the ball and then getting a little bit more of an angle at the ball here. One other thing could be that you're just starting a little further back so that you're not having to move laterally, but you're already coming at the ball with an angle. Now here is the second part. This is one of the examples. So let's look at this one here as an example of what I mean. See here, you're being pulled out all the way. So ideally quicker feet, more aggressive steps, and they can be big. That's perfectly fine. In fact, you want to have big steps. It's not the old teaching small steps at the beginning. You want to cover the court, especially since you look to be a very tall player with about three strides. So one, two, three, and then a couple of adjustment steps and then a longer stride into the ball. But seeing here, you're being pulled out wide. And at this point here, that is where I feel you could let your left hip swing around a little bit more and not block yourself. See here, this looks to me that you're really, really trying to keep your back foot back instead of naturally letting it come around. It does come around a little bit, but you're really not using this hinge step basically to swing around the axis of your own body. So let's look at a back in here of Grigor Dimitrov that I think is fairly similar to the ones that you're hitting, maybe not quite as far out. But number one, you see that he's further behind the baseline than you. And again, that is something that I see a lot when people play with the ball machine. They are fairly close up to the baseline. So I'm not sure if you have the same tight court position when you play points. But I would suggest just step back a little bit because you see here what he's trying to do with one, a few teeny tiny adjustment steps, but then with a much longer stride here, and you see that he's able to step forward a little bit more. And now look at what the back leg and the back hip is doing. So he's making contact. Of course, some of the body weight is pulling him out here, but he's letting that left hip come around with a much wider step. You see that here, of course he's sideways. But now we see that the left hip comes around and the stance here is a lot wider. If I compare that to your back end here, so if you have that in mind still, how far his left leg is swinging around, 
see where you're stopping. So you're basically just staggered behind your front foot. And I think you're just blocking yourself there a little bit. So let's look at one more and see if that was maybe just an exemption or an exception. See if I can still have you back here. Yeah, so you just see that here in the corner, you're not really coming around. And that makes for a little bit of an off balance shot, I wanna call it. So you do wanna keep a wider base at all times. As you're approaching the ball, see that bigger step here, which lowers him, of course, a little bit, but that also then really facilitates that lift up and also driving into the ball. Because again, we're always talking about using the ground as really a help to generate energy. And then let that left hip come around and recover here in a wider step. So here we have one more example of a ball where he's being pulled out a little further. And again, look at how he's approaching that ball. So outside leg is loading and he's able to stride in a lot more. So body weight goes more into the ball and he allows his left hip to come around after he gets that lift. And that also will help you then on recovery because if he had to really recover very quickly back to the center, his easiest form of recovery right here would be to use a crossover. So that also then of course is beneficial for your backhand. So I think your backhand Bastian is awesome. Just teeny tiny tweaks and they have mostly to do with your footwork. But you wanna make sure that of course with your feet, you're putting yourself in a position that you can use these really good fundamentals every time.